I'm Hunter. I'm Rebecca. I'm Caitlin. I'm Nessa. This is the Family Show. Okay. <laughs> and we're demonetized. <laughs> what? Hello. Hi. Welcome. Hello. It's Tuesday, peeps. And you know what that means? Christmas Eve Eve Eve. Sure. <laughs> this time it is. <laughs> and we're going to talk about one of the best things around the holidays. Food. And what better way to talk about food than, you know, board games with food and drinks. Yes. Yeah. Hello, people. Good evening. Yay. So, Top 10 food themed games. Uh, now, hold on, hold on, because when I wrote this down last week, eating and drinking games, it's. No. Nope. Yeah. No. Nope. I wrote that down last Tuesday. No. Nope. That, that was when they were having a discussion about food themed games. That's what mm -hmm. you wrote as your note. Well, Which brings me to the first point of contention. Here we go. So I did a little research, because <laughs> I'm ever diligent in my research mm. when it comes to board games and board game top tens. Not me. There's a bit of controversy around what is food. We never have controversial topics on this channel. Never. What, we avoid controversy. What is Hello, food? So I did a little, a little research. So This is going to so be a technically, If you want to get technical, drinks are not food. Or... <laughs> Because they can sustain you. They are food. What about... But then there's another definition. It's like, if it doesn't have any nutritional value, it's not food. But then half of American food would not be food. There's also... If it's not... Like, has any calories, has no caloric value, it's not food. That sounds like Weight Watchers. <laughs> I dismiss but it. But... Here at the Family Showdown, it's all food. Paint a wide berth. <laughs> <laughs> Drinks, water, things that kind of look like food. <laughs> it's Eat, food. drink, and be merry, man. So I like drinks, it. I like it. I like drinks it. are valid. Uh, Non-nutritional <laughs> drinks are valid. Um, so. <laughs> There's actually a discussion of whether soup is a drink. Oh, jeez. <laughs> And then we got to discuss <laughs> what constitutes a soup. And then we get into the whole cereal there was a, conversation. There was a, I, I, did, I did a quite a bit of reading. And then you get into the conversation, is a hot dog a sandwich? I mean, it just kind of all goes downhill from here. We really don't want to touch now, on you're that. Now you're on the internet, right? you go on one of those little rabbit holes. Oh, you went, I went down. I went, I went. You went down a rabbit hole. I went, I went a little too about far yep. about what is food. Or spices food. <laughs> what is food? Don't, baby, don't hurt me. Or condiments food. Yeah. Is there a game that's purely about condiments? Because that would be funny. There's that one ketchup game. Tom hated that and he threw it on the table. <laughs> I don't All right, that so here it is. Our top ten food theme games. And by food, we mean anything that you put in your mouth that makes you happy. <laughs> that's food. That's not medicine. It's not, uh, what else is, what else? Just, do you why don't you stop right there? What, thing, we'll, what we'll things just, do you uh, not want to put in your mouth? That Medicine? I don't know. Drinks. Snakes. Water. Death, alcoholic beverages, poison, uh, food, uh, condiments, spices, um, um, things that are shaped like food. <laughs> anyway, my number 10. I'm like, all the little bits and pieces in the cardboard box they tell you not to eat. <laughs> there's, there's so many things. All right, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking, speaking of, uh, of, uh, of spices, my number 10 is herbaceous. Nice. Herbaceous is my number 10. We have to talk about honorable mentions later, too. I, I have, like, yeah, my short list is, like, 20 games. But mm. Herbaceous. Mm. So, the reason, and, and we didn't talk about this, but we'll talk about it now. I ordered my list on how strong the theme is, not necessarily how much I like the game. Because, if that was the case, Herbaceous would not be on my list, because... It's a it's a light card game. But anyway, somebody's getting cold. And the reason, it, well, the reason it's it's so low is because you could probably rethink this in many different ways. So this is just a simple uh, card drafting How set, co you, set collection game. So you could kind of trick it up and make it something else. But it's like of, spices instead of herbs. But it, but looking once you, once you're when you're in the process of playing the game and it's on the table, it's a very nice looking game. It's got mm -hmm. these beautiful pictures of different kinds of herbs, and it just looks really nice. So 
That's why I picked it as my number 10. Herbaceous. Okay. Okay. Ooh. See, Julio's already talking. He's saying seasoning. It's not food. See, I told you. Controversy. <laughs> oh, well, I'm going to bring some more controversy to the fore here with my number 10. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you did not. Not everyone eats you rabbit food. You did not. <laughs> I did. <laughs> the views of, of Rebecca are not necessarily the views of the family. Put it on the screen. All right, this is Great Western Trail. Because if those cows are not being sent to get eaten, I don't know what's going on with this. Cows. That is not what's going on here. And if so, um, I got to tell you about a movie called Old Yeller, too. So, Great Western Trail, you're moving your food along this nice little path up to Kansas City to get sold to become Omaha Steaks. Omaha Steaks in Kansas City? Yeah, it's, it, they're kind of close. <laughs> not really. Well, why do they herd them all the way up the country then? You know. Anyway, they're moving them up to get them to, to... <laughs> food production. It's all food production. Yeah, that's right. That's right. See, oh, the audience man. approves. They're with me. They you gave me follow? crap for herbaceous, but Great Western Trail is okay. I see Who where this is going. Who gave me crap for herbaceous? Julio. See. Oh, well, that's one person. See, see, <laughs> see. <laughs> do you eat your pets? Feed them. <laughs> There you go. So, anyway, yes. So, send Bessie this and Bevo. My, this gets my, my official... And it's one of your favorite games. Should I have put it at number one instead? No, it's not very thematic. It's very thematic. It's just, what side of the food production do we want to be on, people? This is the very I don't beginning. wonder where my food comes from. <laughs> You're like, it comes in a package. Okay. Spe All right. Speaking of pasted on themes and food, here comes another one. <laughs> And that is Bonanza. Beans. Bring on the you're beans. You're planting beans in your field. And you have all kinds of That's beans. A, you have stinky hmm. beans and jumping beans and, and other kinds of beans. And you're, you're giving me guff about cows that people eat. Meanwhile, there's you stinky beans. Bean is a food. Oh, is bean not a food? Yes. Bean, beans probably one of the most eaten foods. Yeah, that's true. Probably rice that's true. and then beans. Uh-huh. And then beans and rice. Yeah. Don't help him, Julio. <laughs> Don't encourage him. <laughs> so Bonanza is another game that I'm not a huge fan of. But again, I'm putting games on my list based on how much the strong the food theme is. That's why these are down <laughs> towards the bottom. Because these are... This could be anything. You can't be doing anything with these cards. Oh my goodness. Mary and Julio, you guys. What? Are they, are They're they... the musical fruit. We have the musical fruit comments. Bean, right. Beans, the musical. No, <laughs> you're done here, folks. Oh, anyway, man. so Bonanza is uh, another kind of set collection game with, with beans this time instead of herbs. That's my number nine. <laughs> All his trading games with. Oh, they get, they get more thematic. This is the way this list works. <laughs> Fine. All right. Are you serious? Number nine is the last of my trolls. Oh my gosh, you creepy. What? It is all about food in this game. Wow. No, no. My number nine is dominant species. Because <laughs> if you're gosh. not eating the food, you are the food in that game. You cannot argue that point. You didn't say it had to be human food. You did not say it had to be human food. Did anybody here say it had to be human food? It's no. implied. Well... Too bad. Strongly implied. Well, too bad. <laughs> I'm totally ignorant of any implications. Dominant species. Dominant species. So, right, it's all they about, eat, they eat it's each about, other. Yeah. It's all about eat or be eaten. Are you food? This isn't or an you eating. Going... Top 10 eating games. It's top 10 uh, food Eating games. and drinking. That's top what you wrote down. Eating and drinking. That's what you wrote down. Exactly. And that's See, what Julio says that's a stretch. So, uh, Julio, you've lost Julio. Julio's been on your side this no, whole time. He he no, he wasn't. very top. He said that herbs isn't food. Oh, man. He's just being a troll then. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Are you done with your, your trolls? This I is... am done with my troll. That's my last troll. Okay. But it also <laughs> does fit the theme. You cannot deny that that is eat or be eaten. That is food. <laughs> I, so if someone was going to use this for the next dinner dinner party menu, yeah, not so much. See, not so much. see, they know what's up. You can put beans and uh, herbs on your dinner menu. Yeah, I'd like to see some of the beans that are in that game on your dinner menu. Mm. All right, let's just switch mm. gears to yes, to, Julio. To, I agree. To another another Dino another semi pasted on set collection card game. <laughs> and that is Sushi Go Party. That was a fantastic theme. It has got a pretty good theme, but you can make that anything about. you want, pretty much. How dare you, sir? <laughs> it, would, it wouldn't be nearly as fun. Same as Herbaceous. 
It I would not know. be the game hey, yesterday. Or, or Bonanza. I'd argue that one. But... <laughs> sushi Go Party. See, now, the Hungry Hungry Hippos would actually apply to your list. The way yes, you... it would. Yes, it would. This list, this... Uh... It's about them eating I think, food. I think, I think your, your cows went off the, their tracks in, in Great Western Trail. Oh, man. Anyway, Sushi Go Party is another card drafting <laughs> set collection game, which all three of my first three are all card drafting set collection games with food themes. <laughs> This one's slightly stronger because you actually, there's combinations of cards that you do that make sense. Like, you put wasabi on your, your food and you get more points and stuff like Ooh. that. Not a huge fan of wasabi, sorry. It's alright. It's, it's a bit much for me. They call me a troll. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. What's up? Oh no. Oh no, what? We can apply cannibalism. Oh, okay. Well, right? <laughs> cannibalism. <laughs> It's eating. So you go party. It's a it's a great game. It was socially it's a great accepted. family game. A great great set collection game. <laughs> and like I said, it's got slightly more thematic. See, these little three are slightly more thematic because herbaceous could be anything. Beans could be pretty much anything. But at least you're planting them in a field, so that's a little more thematic. And then you got Sushi Go Party, which has a combination of cards that kind of makes sense. I kind of like that Coraloo, thinking that there needs to be like multiple lists, like food, drink, food production. What'd you have? Uh, critters. Critters eating. Yeah, but we wouldn't have 10. We were stretching to get 10 games on this list. Uh, you said you had like 30 games. 20, but yeah. Anyway, if you take it by the way I interpreted it, you have a lot more games. Oh my and gosh. I don't understand well, you this interpreted issue. interpreted it. Anyway. You are Mr. Interpret. Anyway. Now you finally got a real one. That's Congratulations. Right. Congratulations. You're welcome. welcome to the show, Rebecca. You're welcome. Oh, man. <laughs> my number eight is Vinos. Okay? Welcome to the show. So... Vinos. It's all about you have finding a good region to plant your grapes and harvesting your grapes. And sometimes you sell your grapes, sometimes you make wine, and you sell the wine, and you display the wine in contests and things. And there's all sorts of stuff going on with this. Vinos. There you go. Except it's really heavy euro. And this is not a pasted on theme. No, no, it's very extremely This is thematic. a very thematic heavy euro that is from our buddy McButterson named... Lacerda has some of the heaviest euros. I agree with you so thematic. much. Did you make your that your number eight? It's my number seven. I already did eight. Oh, oh, you're seven. My number seven. Is oh, but you had to Vinos. specify the deluxe edition because he's like that's all we've played. Only in a certain region of France. That's what we've played. Rolls. Anyway, he's Vinos is, is extremely Vinos. thematic. You actually uh, are building vineyards. You're hiring workers. The workers are producing the wine. The wine produces better in certain seasons, depending on the weather. Take that wine to market. You sell it, you export it out to other countries, or you can sell it locally. And then you take your best wine, your most wonderful wine, and you present it at a show and get all kinds of victory points. So, exactly. Very thematic, but totally. technically, wine is not food. <laughs> it is eating or drinking. Okay. <laughs> According to my list, it fits perfectly. <laughs> we agree. Some people... We agree. Drink their calories, we agree. sir. What's that? Some people drink their calories. Viticulture in Portugal, kind of. This one's extremely. Yes. This, this one, um, this one's more focused in on the like entire process. Actually, you building your. I guess you, I guess it's very, they're very similar because this they, is a, a, a more difficult version of viticulture. It's I, much. There's much more options and much more different paths to victory in in viticulture. Um, it's more um, it's all about streamlined to wine selling orders. a wine. So yeah. this one has lots of different ways to yep. score points. There you go. No. Vinos on super clearance. Snatch that up, Coralou. That's a great game. That's it's a really good, good game. It was it's our, heavy. It was our favorite uh, Lacerda game for a longer time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought about this game. one. But... <laughs> Kabuki. What? What? Kabuki says, Robinson Crusoe, when you have to cook, and who can make the rock soup? <laughs> You can stretch it, yes. That's a mess. That's a mess. That's your number I seven. It. I love it. That's your number seven. My number seven is Fields of Green. That's Again, a good, this, is a, a good one. this is at the beginning of the food process where you were planting your crops and trying to get the maximum yields. And the best way to do that is to strategically put water sources near your fields or other types of fields that grow nicely with that. Um, keeping some of the animals on their, you know, the other side of the farm and things like that. There's all these, it's tile placement. And there's bonuses and detriments to what you put next to them and everything. And water sources can only go to a certain part. And it's really interesting, too, because the water runs out. You have to replenish. And so I like, I just, there's a lot of fun things with it. It's similar to, uh, what's the space game? Um, 
It's a re-theming of... Uh, it's re-theming of a... Uh, um, the game we got rid of. Oh, I was going to look over here to cheat. Mm. I went brain dead. But anyway... It Can't is. The name of it. Yeah, it's it's a, ref but it's really fun. I actually like st uh, stars. It's uh, among the stars. There you That's go. what it is. You among the stars. Fields of Green. Quicker than I am. I uh, my brain names. Um, it's like Among the Stars, but with a nice farm theme, and I like the way. Honestly, it's weird because I usually really really love the space games. I've gotten to where I like this farm theme with this one a little bit better. It, well, the other one, this one's a little more strategic. It's a uh, little more A little difficult. more resources. There's a little more resources to manage. Yeah. There's more, this is more going on. It's just yeah. better. Yeah. The other game's great, but it's just more placing tiles and then getting into relationship Trying to get the, the aliens and stuff, yeah. Right. This one's all about the farms and building up your farms and stuff. No, it's not space farming. It's just building a space station in that one. Yeah. So it's, it's different, but. You have um, different types of rooms, like you have like, you know, Commercial rooms and military areas. And certain and aliens can go in certain rooms. You have to kind of like set them up a certain way and stuff. But this one is, this one's a lot of fun. I, I really like this one. And you can get, you know, fenced in areas for your animals and this and that. I really, it's a cute game. It's a cute game. All right, my number like six. My no, number six, slightly more thematic than Vinyos. Is it Viticulture? It is Viticulture. <laughs> I almost, okay. Spoiler, I ended up, I was going to put a slash and put Vinos and Viticulture as one. Because They're very similar, but I think Viticulture is a lot more thematic so because you're actually going through, and um, in Vinos, it's more of a macro view. You're kind of pulled back. Oh, uh, you're going to go through the macro, micro nonsense again. And Viticulture is more, more mm. down in the, down in the, the, the mm. vat, smashing your grapes. So you actually go through the whole process. You're planting vines. You're growing your grapes. You're smashing the grapes. You're aging your grapes. You're creating wine. It's more. It's much more thematic. And my list is based on theme. And I think viticulture, in my opinion, is more thematic than vineyards, just because it's more of the process. You're seeing more of the process. It feels more. You're actually moving grapes around and creating wine. It's you're, more. Well, you're not moving individual grapes in vineyards, but you're not doing anything in that. Yeah, game. you do the whole side, the left side but of you the get a little, the field. You, you get a little chit that tells you what what your what size or how good your wine is. That's not. There's nothing. There's no. There's no. No. Uh -uh. Okay. Okay. No. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pity culture is more thematic, in my humble opinion, than Vinos. And that's why it that is slightly higher. Technical difficulties button over there? No, I haven't installed one yet. Oh, lucky you. Okay. I, could, I, could so. do my, I could do an intro to my, my new show. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's it. That's my number six, Vinculture. See, so you didn't put Vinculture at all? No. Huh. Interesting. I decided to choose Log between list. the two. Log I was afraid list. that I was going to... I didn't want our list to repeat. I didn't want our list to be boring Log and stale. And list. be like, oh, ha-ha, I put that on my list Log. too. And then you guys are like, wow, we just learned about 10 games total. Whoop-de-doo. This one just... This, so this one I... Not, your number six was my number 11. spice. Okay. Your number six is my number 11. My number six is all about fish. And that is Nusfjord. This game is a fun one. And it's all about fish. And... Fishing for fish and farming that fish and getting locals that are good at fishing to help you fish. And then you have to dole out your fish to people that invest in your company and those old codgers that are good at helping you find those fish in the first place. And then eventually you feed yourself and make some profits and things like that. But it's all about the fish. I love that this is another one of Feld's kind of pointy salad games, but this one felt a little more thematic than some of his others um, because a lot of them are just point salad nonsense, right? This one is... a very much kind of follows the 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 fish through their little journey and with your company trying to get everything going and keep your company running. So I really enjoy this one. Yeah, there were, I, I pushed this one down a little bit. I mean, it, it has a pretty strong theme, but it's got a lot. A lot of that game is the manipulating the, the stocks and building buildings and things like that for your fish. Well, I know to, to increase your fish production, but I kind of I kind of punitated a little bit because there's. The fish is the fish is like the main goal, producing the fish. But the 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 whole game is driving to, to produce more of those. So you're building buildings. You're hiring el elders to help you build. Buildings. I thought you were gonna say elves, and I was just elders. <laughs> and you uh, making boats and things like that. So it seems like the, the the fish are kind of the end result. You're not really doing things with them as you go along. It seems like to me <gasps> a little less. That's why it was my number eleven. It, it just missed the, the list. Just oh, missed my the list. Goodness. Just missed. The Mm. Alright, so now now we're hitting the, mm. the top my top five. These are the super thematic ones. Super like, crazy thematic. Okay. My number five, and I bet, bet Rebecca missed putting this on our list. 
My number five is At the Gates of Lo Yang. I will comment on that with my number five. Why? You'll see. At the Gates of Lo Yang. This one is... So, so a lot of Uwe Rosenberg's games are about animals and and food. <laughs> is it but, animal, vegetable, or... But animal? most of his games have other things going on. Like in Caverna, you're mining and getting gems and you're creating jorbs and going out and doing jorby things and stuff like that. The food is kind of a kind of a, a part of the game. In at the Gates of Yang, it's all that's all it is is food. You're you're you're, you're growing food. You're taking food to market. You're you're trading food for other food. You're making more gates. places <laughs> to make food, and it's food and more food and food. So this one is uh, a few of his games kind of zoom in. They take a, take it like it takes a portion of a lot of his games and zoom in. This one really zooms in on yeah. on growing the crops so and you know selling selling your crops for profit and create doing contracts with the food. It has a small little side thing. You get victory points by spending money, but all your money income comes from producing food. So yeah. it's extremely. I enjoy it quite a bit. It's it's like I said. It's kind of a, a zoomed in view. If you take Caverna and kind of just zoom in on the growing the crops, That's it's kind of what really it's kind of what a, a Gates Lo Yang is. It's a yeah. really. Um, it's, I mean, it's all about being efficient with your your crops and when to know when to create new uh, fields to, to create crops, how to, when to switch out and swap goods, which cards to draft to, to make more foods, which contracts you need to get, put out there. Truth. It's, it's all about food. So that's why it's my number five. Tommy has a legitimate question before I... A legitimate? Tommy's yeah. not trolling? Does Azul Legacy count for this list? Azul Legacy? Oh, yeah. You don't have any in there anymore, thank goodness. <laughs> yes, the Starburst edition. The Starburst are gone. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want to forget about them and then pull this off the shelf ten years from now and it's like... It's like Rocks and... Like something reaches out and grabs me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Alright, at the gates of Lo Yang. Okay. Number five. So, this is another one. My number five is one that I was thinking about kind of doing another... Vino slash viticulture thing, and this is with Gates of Loyang and what I ended up picking for my number five, which was Ray Colt. Because again, Uve and his, and I said Nussfjordus Feld, and that's actually, I, th I think it's Rosenberg. Yeah, it's Rosenberg. So this is another Rosenberg because Rosenberg loves his food. And Ray Colt. I didn't even catch it, you said Feld. I would have. Yeah. And Ray Colt is. Um, very similar to the Gates of Loyang in that it's all about it's all about these vegetables and you have your little gardens and you're making those but this time you're making your way around the table and setting up these tables of food a banquet yeah. thing and you have to strategically plant your gardens in such a way that you're harvesting and able to keep moving forward as you're planting and setting up for the next so that you can move efficiently around the banquet table and get everything prepared kind of a race as well obviously because you're trying to beat other people to right. that uh, it's like it's like a, a gates low gang and something that you pay money this one you're actually taking your crops and yeah and putting them on the and that's table. why i picked this one it seemed a little bit more foodie a little bit more foodie and so i don't disagree with it. you because my number four oh my gosh see <laughs> it's like uve love from mr my Hunter number four evening. is ray colts which that's i think hilarious. is so uh, you know how i said that a gates low yang kind of zooms in on the crop growing you take a gates go lane and then zoom in again, and you got Ray Colt. It's yeah. just all you're doing is growing crops and then give paying basically paying instead of paying gold like in Lo Yang, like I said, you mm -hmm. you have to pay certain food to move forward. So like the first space may be uh, one mushroom, the next space might be two. I don't remember what the vegetables are. Two mm -hmm. two corn. The next space is two two mushrooms, and you have to just pay. You're paying to move forward on this track around the board, and you're allowed to skip in certain ways. Yeah. And, and some you skip one per turn, and there's cards that let you do certain manipulating of that. But the whole goal is to get as far on this track as you possibly can. Uh, at the end of the game, whoever's furthest on that track wins. The same way in Lo Yang, the furthest on the track that paid the most money, it wins the game as well. But this one's, but it's all, it's just growing crops and turning in your crops. I mean, that's all you're yep, basically doing. Yep, that's all doing. you're doing, but it's all about, like you said, the timing. The timing's amazing. So, excellent. Well, I took a, a turn towards the heavier for my number four. And I guess this would be food distribution so much. And that's with <laughs> Food Chain Magnate. Of course, you knew this was going to show up on here. So this is all about the fast food and drinks. 
and building your restaurants and getting to as many people in the neighborhood as possible. And it also is all about the, the support and function of your restaurant, hiring people, making sure you have enough cooks, make sure you have enough food produced so that you can get them out to the customers and make a profit. And it is a heavy, heavy game. Heavy game, mean game, brutal game. But yeah, this but one, foodie. this one is it's like, a this is like a, candy land. <laughs> it's like that. The it's like it a no candy land. It's like a modern, <laughs> a modern food game, right? Because you're hiring workers and you're spe- yeah. specialist workers, and you're building out an entire corporation with advertising and and distribution, and you have to get your your vendors to give you the the goods you the stuff you need. You actually, send out guys to go pick up stuff for you to to make all your food. It is really uh, kind of an all encompassing um, view of the of food. Yeah. Um, it's 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 really cool. It's really interesting, but it's it is like you said. It's very heavy, very mean, very cutthroat, just like the real business world is. Yeah, um, yeah. No and it's all thanks. about it's all about efficiencies and um, building a. It's basically a big giant engine building mm-hmm. uh, game. So it's really cool. Really cool game. Really cool game. <laughs> surprised it made you look now. I'm surprised. You're not surprised by this. Oh, hush. My number three. Is it Food Chain Magnate? No, it is Scoville. Is it really? Scoville. My number three. That's my number three. Is it really? Yes. I told you this was going to happen. This is why I went a little bit off the rails, people. You're Aren't you glad Scoville? that I provided right, I'll go ahead spice and, variety? I'll go ahead and put your three so up. tell me, tell me about your Scoville, sir. <laughs> well, Scoville is, is a is a kind Hot of topic. a. What kind of game is this? It's really. It's about growing. Well, no, I'm talk, no, I'm talking about what what the the thing is it's interesting basically you're taking uh, uh peppers and and crossbreeding them to create different kinds of peppers you and you're using those peppers to, farming f- game. to fill fill contracts is that right yeah i've only played this well once. you're making different salsas and things with them basically oh yeah so so basically you're you're, you're getting certain co- types of peppers and you're harvesting those peppers you're using those peppers to fulfill contracts so it's your game but it's interesting it's got a really interesting mechanism of your little farmer guys moving around the board and he's Crossbreeding the peppers based on how he travels around the board, and eventually you create this giant ghost pepper, which is and it's interesting. the The hotter the pepper is, the kind of the thicker it is. The on pieces the, are are on the board. It's wonderful. So, so it's re- it's really a really interesting game, and it's um, that's I just find it really the whole uh, proximity thing of your little farmer moving around. It's kind of a puzzle of figuring out okay, where is he going to walk to. Crossbreed, yeah, because people and, can cut you off, right, and, and block your path and things. So I guess it's worker movement, kind of. I mean, it's really it's kind of, kind of unique in that the way it kind of works. That's really it's really interesting, and I enjoy it quite a bit. Yep. So, what were you gonna say? Oh, I just think it's a lot of fun. I I enjoy it too, and uh, yeah, it's a little bit. It can be a little bit cutthroat when you have a lot of players because it's really easy yeah, to cut we, people off. We kind of did our own thing in two player. In two for, player, for the most part, usually. Nah. Towards the end, of, I was messing with you a little bit. Oh yeah, I was purely innocent in that one too. You, I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. Right, but yeah, it's 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 really fun, and it has you know, it actually talks a little bit about the peppers if I remember right in the game too. So. All right. It's a fun one. So on my on, on to my number two, which yep. is a crossover, <laughs> which we're going to have a lot of crossovers. So we really didn't have a lot to pick from for this list. Uh, again, if you took my version of things, I think you would My number seen... two is Food Chain Magnet. Uh, yeah. Food Chain Magnet. Yeah, like I said, this is this is really, this is like the whole, the whole kit and caboodle they say down Except here. Except for where they ship the cows there. Now you have to actually go out and get your stuff, your supplies. No, that's what... Great Western Trails for. Oh. So you play Great Western Trail. Uh-huh. And then, and then, and yeah, then, and then you... you no. Food Chain Magnate. Anyway, Food Chain Magnate, it's a really like it's a really heavy your game. It's re- I enjoy it quite a bit, but it's extremely thematic. I mean, you're doing the entire entire food, like a food business, everything. Dude. From hiring workers and f- re- gathering resources, making your burgers, distributing your burgers, advertising, everything. You can- I just had the most brilliant brainstorm we should have a food game day and we have the whole process from start to finish of a meal grow our crops we grow deliver our, crops, our cows deliver our cows what about the slaughter process we have a game for that probably uh pop dominant the species pop the pig <laughs> <laughs> that's messed up it's like okay. it's a food chain and, you're right it's right nice. right right and then and then food chain magnate and yeah so what's your number two? My number two would be the next one that I would want to do on my my food themed board game day, and that would be Coffee Roaster, of course. Um, 
This game is one of the most thematic games um, for food that I could think of. Um, it was one of the first <laughs> games that I thought about, too. <sighs> that was funny, Zerus. Oh, my god. This is the last game would be... I, I saw Pecunia Pe- Nonalette. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I get. <sighs> can't take I get. your people anywhere. That's good. That's All good. right, this is why we can't have nice things, guys. I'm just saying. Well, I, I haven't played this game, so tell so me about it. So, Coffee Roaster is a one-player game. That's why I haven't played it. That's true. You could play it actually. It and you know me, I'm not a huge solo gamer because I don't know. I have a very strong association of social activity with board games. Like it's just like ingrained in my head because that's how we always played games growing up and stuff. So like it seems weird to me. There's very few games that I'm like I really enjoy playing by myself. And this one is made for that, A. And two, it is just, it's so much fun. It actually goes into the process. I learned things playing this game because I, I drink the coffee. I do not know much about the coffee. You don't grind the coffee? I up. did not grind the coffee. And, and you learn about where it comes do, from. Do the little squishy thing? <laughs> the French press? Okay. Anyway, <laughs> you can tell Hunter hasn't played this game either. Squish. But it has the different coffee beans from different places and it talks about them. It actually has little descriptions and stuff about it, which is really cool. Goes through the whole process and then you end up with your coffee and then the how you do that is you get victory points and stuff. And it's just a really neat little thing with the beans and you're manipulating the little beans and stuff. And it's, ugh, it's a cute game. I like the art. The theme's fun. And again, I learned something. I always like it when it's got some little tidbits in it and stuff. So, well, you know what? And Jeff, if you're allergic to coffee, this is the safest way that you can mess around with coffee, okay? Because it's cardboard. You're not going to have any coffee. reaction. I mean, they stink coffee in so many things. That'd be, that'd be, yeah, that'd, it'd be really, that'd stink to be allergic to coffee. Yeah. All right. Yep. So Time for the number one. Why don't you reach out to the table and get our number one? <laughs> of course it is there. <laughs> of I, course. Because do you like a day? Do you like a pizza? Would you like a pizza? Okay. If you don't think this is the most thematic game, you people are crazy. Okay. It comes in. A pizza box. Hello. A pizza. It even opens like a pizza box. And inside, oh, egads. Um, inside, this has been s- stored vertically. You have slices of pizza, of which on the other side you see the crusty bottom of the pizza. <laughs> this is insane. I could eat these if I wasn't paying attention. Then you have the daily specials, which are special bonuses that you get during each round. Okay. And did I mention there's different types of pizzas with different toppings and whatnot? This is ridiculous. Okay. I haven't even told you how to do this game yet. And it's just cool. The theme. Okay. Score sheet. Um, let me move closer so you can see it. It's a guest check. It's ridiculous. Old school. Love it. Okay. And the rules for the game. You ready for this, people? This is one of my favorites. It's a menu... Look at this, even from a distance, you guys can tell. Look at this. They set it up like a menu. This is ridiculous. It makes me hungry just looking at this game, and I'm not even hungry. Okay, so what this game does is you build some pizza. And this is fun at any player count that we have played so far. You make your pizzas. So you have a pizza with these pieces. And you set a today's special. And then it's a I pick, you choose kind of game, so... They designate, depending on how many players and all this kind of stuff, you have to split up the pizza. And then the other team, or the next person down the line, starts the choice thing, and we go around. So there's some things here that you want to keep in mind. There are numbers at the bottom of the slices of pizza. Some of them have two where you can pick or choose which one, and you're doing kind of a set collection. So the most that have the number sixes, you're going to get those victory points, right? Um, But you don't get any if you don't place first. Then there's also the nasty little, where are they? Is it the pepperonis? It's pepperonis, isn't it? It's not the anchovies, right? Yeah, the pepperonis pepperonis can be bonus points at the end of the game or depending on what's going on, that depends on some of the specials, they could be negative points and things like that. You can also choose to save yourself. If you know, for example, that Hunter's already got like all of the number eights and he's going to win that one. You see a slice that you're going to get in your round when you're picking, you decide to eat that pizza instead to get rid of negative points and things like that. So much fun. Cute game. Again, ridiculous. Look at this. I mean, tell me that's okay. The way I'm holding it doesn't look like pizza, but you know what I mean? It looks like pizza. I love the fact that there's crust on the back. 
They even printed the back side of all of these pieces. This is crazy. Yeah, and when you, uh, it's a, it's a I split you choose game, and you actually when you, that. when you uh, deal out a round, it's actually you make a pizza, and then you have to split the pizza up in actual piece chunks based yeah, chunks. on. But you can't, you can't pick one from one side and one nope. from the other side. You it's, split it up based on how the you actually slice it up. Because people don't want you to touch you, all their food. Like you would slice up a pizza. That's, That's right. That's interesting. Yeah, this, this is, is so this much is fun. crazy. This is, a, this is the first game I thought of when, when yep. this list was same here. Uh, everything else was kind of secondary. Let's look. Let's look at some of the <laughs> games. Let's see who won. I always, always like to. Oh look my god! Let's see. No. Why do we? Me and Rebecca these? played, and I won. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to keep that one. Oh my gosh! <laughs> let's see. Me, you, your mom, and dad played. Oh once, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you won. Woo! We'll get rid of that one. Uh huh. I figured. And then it looks like the me, you, gaming wife, couple of my friend and his girlfriend, and somebody named Tommy played. <laughs> and Tommy won. What? Oh, I gotta get rid of that one. <laughs> Rip that one up. Wow, wow. That's funny. Alright. So, I wanna talk. Honor. Give me that. And it's a big mess when you're done, just like eating red pizza. All right, so... <laughs> I knew it would be our number one. That's why I kind of hit it underneath. That's funny. I like that because I was thinking about putting that over to the side. So, so honorable mentions. We need to talk about those because I know that some of you have played some... Well, Sarah said he played a game called Run for Your Life Candyman. And apparently, if you play with a gingerbread man as your pawn, you actually eat pieces of him. That is amazing. <laughs> Yes. That would a truffle shuffle. Yeah, see, that's true. I haven't played I forgot, it yet. I haven't played it yet, but yeah, I forgot about that one. And Chocolate Factory, I know you guys were all talking about that one. I, I thought it. about putting that on the list, but I don't know enough about it to talk about it much. You want to go first? Me first. Um, go ahead, and I'll see what else you have. Cause all I right, here's my here's something. my short list in no particular order, the ones that didn't make it. Takanoko, true. Feast for Odin. I chose chose not to do that one because there's so much other things other than food going Ditto. on in that game. There's Ditto. you're collecting jewelry, you're you're building furs. Boats, you're, gonna eat you're, those. you're doing furs. Gross. A food is like a piece of that game. So it's kind of which is funny because it's the title. I guess the but end you of have each to round you have to feed feasting. you have to feed yeah. your but anyway yeah. the uh, yep, you're feeding yep. your people. They just make it kind of thematic the way yep. you feed your people. But I mean it's kind of like Caverna, and uh, it's just a, a part of the game. It's food. So next one, Century Spice Road. Um, again, spices. I, I I consider that valid for this list, but it just that you could be it could be anything. That one, yeah. I mean, it could be anything. I get you. I mean, there's actually a Century Golem edition. I think you're doing crystals <laughs> instead of spice. I think I never ever played that. Everyone's one. wondering about City of the Big Shoulders now. It's a portion of the game. It's I would consider it somewhat valid. Not all the companies are list. food companies, huh? I, mean, I said it might be on my list. Some of the, some of the some of the companies aren't food companies. You Big have manufacturing shoulder. companies. You have textile companies. It's yep. just a part of the game. It's not a. a... You're no fun, sir. If I was doing anyway. my favorite games with a food theme, uh, like part of the games, if I did it uh -huh. like I did my animal game, uh -huh. it would be number one. Okay. All right. There you go. They got point salad. That one just missed my list, but yep. it could be anything. Yep. In fact, it could be th rethemed as Dune. <laughs> Using the tribes. That went full circle, folks. You got to watch last week if you don't know what we're talking about. That's good. Uh, That's next good. to That's Gingerbread good. House. Yep. Which I considered that one, but yep. it's more about killing people than it is Gingerbread House. We've had that discussion before, too. You can see that in previous episodes. That's um, then Go Nuts for Donuts. I almost put that list just to make Nessa happy, but uh, that would be. It would be along the lines of some of the, towards the bottom of my list, like uh, Bonanza and Oops. Herbaceous. It's, it could be anything, but... It, right. It, anyway. Sunday Split, I only played that once, but New York Slice destroys that game, so... Then there's a game I only played one time called Monster Crunch. The oh, breakfast I forgot cereal about that. Game. Yeah. I strongly considered that one, but I just didn't remember enough about it to even talk about it, so yeah. it didn't make my list. Okay. Then there's Fruit Punch. <laughs> I have fun stories about that so one. That one's uh, yes. kind of a... Slapjack kind of game. So, kind of. And then I already talked about New Shore. That was my number 11. That's the one I eliminated last from my Dude, list. Dude, Michael, I agree. Keep the spice flowing. Dune. That's true. Why not? It's spice, it right? So, um... If you really stretch this like I did with the animals way back in the day, with the top 10 animal games, it, you would just be my top 10 games. Because I could probably take every game in my top 10 and stretch it and put animals in Okay, now, there's a point somewhere. where you have to calm down about this stretching bit. I don't think mine were a stretch. Okay? Just saying. Kind of was. No. 
Anyway, what you got? Okay, well, you mentioned most of them, but I did... I also have Fields of Arl. Okay? But that one's got other stuff going on. It's got other stuff going on. Wingspan. You guys talked about that earlier, about the birds eating. That is an aspect of the game that's in everything. Because every time you make a bird... The theme theme is... when When you say Wingspan, what is the theme of that game? Making birds. It's birds. And birds do what? That's they, just, that is a piece of the game. I'm just saying, oh, if we're going to do that. If you want to put it on your list, you, you, that, say, then you, you can't say, say. You ask someone, what is the theme of that game? They should say food or drink or something like this. A food or drink. Oh, you want to be like that? Yes. I was thinking about mint works until I no. realized it really isn't about making it's mints. <laughs> it just looks like mints. <laughs> um, but it's funny because you guys mentioned some of the kids' games. And we talked about like Hungry Hungry Hippo and Pop the Pig and we were making jokes about that. But Candyland and Hi-Ho, if, if the girls were younger again, those would have been all still something I thought about. What about, what about Spinderella? It's eating the ants. A Spinderella eating the ants. That's kind of funny, actually. The spider eating the ants. <laughs> but Hi-Ho Cheerio outfoxed. They lose a chicken pot pie to a thieving fox. They might just turn around and eat the chicken. That's not the theme of the game, though. The theme of the game is catching the, the... It was the theft of a pie but that the is the is, whole theme the theme, of this game. No, the theme... It was a theft of a chicken pot pie. The, Read that thing. The theme is catching oh. the fox. I agree with Julio. That. Read Julio's statement. What? Oh, right, read it out Julio. Loud. Read it loud out for the people at My home. list was an 80s workout video. There was so much stretching. Yeah. Huh. Turnabout is fair play. See, I went hardcore this time. I said, it's got to yeah, be food-themed. Because I got so much crap in my animal that, game. We would have had the same top ten, and it would have been very boring. And you people would have been bored out of your I skulls. I would have made fun of you. Bored out of your skulls. So, yeah, Candyland. Um, you mentioned free... Oh, you you forgot to mention Rocky Road All Mode. That game is broken. Yeah, that's true. We, we literally did. played that Rocky we Road All Mode. Game. We played that game, we and it was... It, it was just... We, broke we, it. Could, we couldn't... I the game so. stalled. Yes. It's like the first time I've ever had a game just stall. We could not. It was. Yep. It was we impossible could not move advance. forward, and there was no rules on how to <laughs> how to deal with the situation. We were just it the game awesome. just stalled. It was awesome. I didn't know you could do that, and it was sad because I really thought it was a fun, cute little game until we broke. It was it. a video game. It would like locked up. <laughs> the game literally locked up. Ooh, Finca. That has. Fun I in considered it. Finca, Finca, but there's other things going on in that game. That's true. Donkeys and carts and stuff. Yes. <laughs> See, thank you, Julia. See, it wasn't boring. See, no. this wasn't boring. <laughs> and, All right, well, uh, we got done fast. Oh, talking about eating MREs, that kind of hits a soft spot, oh, doesn't it? Oh, man. One year, well, since we got a little extra time, I'll tell you a story about MREs. <laughs> so my, my good friend Carl, every once in a while, gets on a survival kick, but he's not like the survivalist that has like the bunker with like like guns and stuff. He's just like... He, he, he takes one little small aspect of survival and then kind of goes crazy with it. So his latest thing was MREs. He was getting MREs. And for my birthday one year, he brought a bunch of... No, MR- no, no. you got to start this off. First of all, he asked Hunter what he wanted for his birthday. And Hunter said, I don't know. Surprise me. <laughs> I did say That's that. That's where the story starts. I did, this, I did say that. Yeah, yeah. Now you can continue. So anyway, so on my birthday, he brought over a bunch of MREs. <laughs> And we tried them. I feel so sorry for people in the military who actually has to eat those if they eat those. I hope, I hope they don't actually eat those. Oh my gosh. That was the most foul tasting stuff I've ever consumed in my you life. You just weren't starving. If you were starving, that would have tasted good, I'm sure. There was cheese, there was cheese in, in this one thing. It was so orange, you had to put sunglasses on or it would blind you. It was like, it just looked like, it just... I think Carl probably buys some, some the, the chemicals, The chemicals were actually, you actually could see the chemicals moving around in the cheese. It was, anyway. <laughs> it's, it, it's actually pretty interesting because they have, uh, they have on, on the ones that are heated, it actually has like little heat packs that you... you Those put, are cool. You break Those open cool. and you put your food in the bag and you put your little heat pack and it actually heats up the food. It's kind of interesting. That's pretty cool. But yeah, oh man, they were gross. So, um, let's see. Some other ones that you guys mentioned. Um, someone mentioned earlier uh, Takanoko. And, you know, you stop and have the little restaurant thing in different stages That's of just it. a small piece, though. You're making, you're doing so, paintings. You're going shopping. So, it's in the game. All right, so, so it should count. For, you, for your list, it would be perfectly fine. See? <laughs> and look at the variety and the interesting things and the topics for conversations that we have with my list. I, think, I find saying. it funny that I'm not the rule breaker. She's the rule breaker this time. Hey, I'm just saying, 
2020, topsy turvy, wobbly, wimey, timey wimey, whatever the <laughs> saying is. Oh, not ta- did I say Takanoko? I meant Takaido. 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 I always do that. Takanoko does. They, they Takanoko, eat though, the bamboo. He's eating the bamboo, so that would work just as well. No, it wouldn't. Yes, it would. He's eating. He spends the game eating. He spends but the you game. You got the growing. Eating. You got the the. Yeah, you got to grow his food. This is ridiculous. Got the, anyway, see, 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 and Takaido has the little. I would think I I personally, when someone says a food theme game, I would think it would be food that I'm going to eat, not a food that a lizard is going to eat, or a bear, or a panda, or a, what else is in. Dominant species, <laughs> a spider or a bug. You know, yep. There you go. But that, but, but that, that is one way to, to look at it. You could go, you <laughs> could, stretch you could go with that whole thing. Like uh, evolution would work, and well, that's the way you look at it. Yeah. Whole types of, all those, of those types things. of games where animals mm-hmm. are competing for for food and territory. Raptor, raptor, <laughs> eating the scientists. <laughs> No, no, no. Survive. Survive? The sharks and no, the sea true. monsters. That's true. We are people. food for the... Yeah, you're getting crazy now. Rampage? <laughs> Terror in Meeple City, that is. I, this Fireball Island. Anything else? Those snakes. Anything eat... else? Oh, no, I'm doing Anything good. Anything I'm good. Are you good? I think we're good. I just... I'm just finding more and more now. I'm you just need, like you need my to drive list, the train back over here list and is, get it on the rails. The list is growing. Get the train I'm back on the rails. I'm telling you, the possibilities are endless. Mmm... No. Doesn't uh, Imperial Settlers have those little apples in them? Yes. If you want, like I said, if you go anything that has food theme, you just take I my top ten. I thought about taking it. War of the Ring. After the orcs eat humans. Number one. Dude. Number two. Dude. I thought about because eighteen Chesapeake. Because there's got to be crossovers. food on those trains that are driving around. I was thinking around. about making this only tangentially eating and drinking games because then we would have had no crossover but we would have had a lot of games using clues because you use apples and oranges and grapes for your clues just you because those are your only four clues hey i got a new color I oh, was, what, what was the new color i can't even remember what's the new color that i found lemon no no it was uh, a purple what was it now do you remember what purple it was no. the new color i found yeah. oh man I didn't find it very well <laughs> it's already flew out of my head see it's always don't stay in my head all right, let's let's preview what's coming up. <laughs> I can mark off the 22nd because we just did the 22nd. So next week, one week from today, on the 29th, New Year's Eve Eve Eve. Ooh. <laughs> we're going to have a live show with shenanigans. Yes. And I guarantee there'll be a session. <laughs> Ooh, and maybe a new one. A new one? You have a new thing? Maybe. You have an idea for a new thing? I might. All right, let's do it. All right, so some new things, new shenanigans next week. Then one week from that, in 2021, we made it to 2021. Not yet. January 5th, the live introduction. Ta-da! It's here, folks. It's Rebecca's Top 100 Games of All Time. It's going to be so exciting. Live, and 110 to 101, a little bonus. Yep. Yep. Then one week from that, one, two, three weeks from today, our Top 10 2020 games and this is going to be <coughs> this may be one of the toughest years for making a top 10 in more list. ways than one well no i just mean first of all we struggled to make sure we got them played yeah but secondly but I, they're but really good my top 10 are be are going to be all nines and tens amazing games we didn't play that many games but we really picked and chose picked and chose i said that i said that i said that right Anyway, Glad I'm sitting down. <laughs> the games that we bought during the year because we had limited, on we, what, had... we were very limited on what we could play, and and, and uh, which is two players, so we we're really picky and choosy, picky and cheesy. See, I, I say something really, really intellectual, and I say picky and cheesy. Picky we're very and picky, choosy. we're very and picky tacky. and choosy about what we played. Dream. So we, I think we've only played, <laughs> I want to say between twenty and twenty-five new game, twenty twenty games, but I would say twenty of those are awesome games. Five. She picked. Oh, it's on. <laughs> oh, it's on. Only one of us is going to make it to 2021. Oh, no. <laughs> that might be what we do live Tuesday. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll see, we'll see you next week. So, before we get out of here, it's the holiday season. It's the holiday And a whoop de doo <laughs> Happy holidays to all you and yours. Yes. Merry Christmas. We all made it this far. I was going to say, it's not... <laughs> 
over yet. <laughs> Don't get so happy excited. holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Merry Boxing Day, Boxing Day, Boxing Day, whatever you're celebrating. Happy Boxing Day. Ha- have a happy holidays. Merry we'll see Kwanzaa. you. We'll see you on the other side next week. Bye. It's early tonight. Look at that. Fifty minutes. We knocked that out. What craziness? Craziness. No, no one asked about your elf. I'm not going to wish you a happy new year because we'll see you next week. That's right.